Welcome to the press conference for uh, Spence Peterson. Um, it'll be January 20th in this great building, this um, home of big time boxing. Um, there are very few fights you can make better right now in, in, in the welterweight division and in all of boxing than Errol Spence and, and Lamont Peterson. The, um, it'll be Showtime Championship Boxing, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time presented by Premier Boxing Champions. Tickets for the live event are priced starting at $50. They can be purchased at Ticketmaster.com by calling 1-800-745-3000 or at the American Express box office here at the Barclays Center. Um, you can also get group discounts by calling the Barclays Center. Errol Spence, right now, one of the most talked about fighters in all of the sport. Many consider him to be not only the best welterweight in the world, but perhaps the best fighter in the world. Um, He's made it consistent that he only wants to fight the best, that he only wants to fight the top welterweights in the world. And on January 20th, he will be fighting another champion and one of the great welterweights uh, in the world today in, in Lamont Peterson. Um, it's a great event. Again, it continues what I've been talking about for, I've been lucky enough to be able to talk about for the last couple of years which is the run of significant, meaningful, the best versus the best kind of matchups on Showtime Championship Boxing. Um, it's been consistent, the quality of programming on Showtime. Um, the, the fight cards have all been incredibly uh, easy to promote because the fights on paper have been so strong and usually in the ring have wound up being so entertaining. Um, you need to make fights where great fighters are fighting great fighters in order to give fans what they need to see and to help energize uh, our sport. So I'd like to bring up the man I think that's most responsible for this great run, um, Steven Espinosa. Thanks, Lou. As we come to the end of 2017 and look back on what has been a really strong year, a year we're very proud of at Showtime Championship Boxing, um, 25 nights of live boxing this year uh, 80 live boxing matches, 27 world title fights, and not just world title fights, but world title fights uh, of top-ranked challengers and top-ranked champions, names versus names. These are competitively matched fights. Uh, we've brought you the highest uh, rated, most watched fight of the year in Thurman versus Garcia right here. Uh, at Barclays Center on CBS is also the most watched primetime boxing match in nearly 20 years. Uh, so we're very proud of what we've achieved, but we're not going to rest on our laurels. Um, we will be kicking off next year right here at Barclays with an incredibly strong card. Errol Spence Jr., um, someone who has sort of grown up on Showtime, we're very proud of that as well. He made his pro debut on Showbox back uh, following the 2012 Olympics. He won his world title on Showtime, and now he's making his first uh, defense on Showtime. Uh, he has knocked out nine straight opponents as, a, as his level of opposition has steadily increased. In fact, over the last five fights, his opponents have had a record of 141, seven, and three. And of course, nine straight knockouts, including those five. He is in the pound for pound on virtually all pound for pound lists in the top 10. So suffice it to say that not a lot of fighters are rushing to fight Errol Spence. But Lamont Peterson uh, not only stepped up to the challenge, but he was so ready to take the fight that he actually relinquished a world title. He relinquished the WBA title to take this fight. That's the kind of fighter Lamont Peterson has always been. He's got one of the strongest resumes uh, in the welterweight division. He's a two-division champion at 140, 147. And he's fought some of the best fighters in the, in the sport, from Danny Garcia to Amir Khan to Timothy Bradley. We're thrilled that we're kicking off the year in 2018 with this matchup. It's yet another top 10 versus top 10 uh, matchup in the welterweight division, a division that we've been focused on for a couple of years now. We're very excited. We'll see you on January 20th here. Trainers. And you, of course, see you on January 20th. And let me start to my immediate left, to your right. He's the trainer of Errol Spence Jr. 
Derek James was also a fighter himself. Nasty super middleweight at one time. One time. <laughs> Years ago. Quickly has established himself as one of the best young trainers in boxing. Personal opinion, should be trainer of the year for what he's done this year. Trains WBC champion Jermel Charlo. Turned him into a knockout machine. He's trained Errol Spence since he was a teenager. He's from Dallas, Derek James. And his fighter, he's the champion. He's the IBF welterweight champion of the world. Won the title, as you saw in grand fashion, went across the pond to Kell Brook's hometown of Sheffield, England. Stopped him in the 11th round in May. Brought back the title here to the States. He was an Olympian. He's undefeated, 22-0, 19 knockouts. Be his third time fighting here in Brooklyn. First as champion, many consider him the future of the welterweight division. His moniker certainly fits him. He is the truth, Errol Spence Jr. To his right, the challenger, two weight division world champion. Won world titles at 140 pounds and at 147 pounds in February of this year. In fact, as you heard Steven say, he gave up the title just so he could take this fight. He's fought some of the biggest names in boxing, Amir Khan, Tim Bradley, Lucas Matisse, Danny Garcia. This will be his third time fighting here in Brooklyn. He is 35-3-1. He's got 17 knockouts. His moniker, Havoc, Lamont Peterson. And his trainer, when you talk about elite trainers, world-class trainers, you have to mention Barry Hunter. He also trains Lamont's brother, Anthony Peterson. He owns the famous Headbangers Gym in Washington, D.C. So many champions train at Headbangers. It is known across the world. He is Mr. Barry Hunter. Guys, let's have a conversation. And Lamont, let me start with you. Because um, in my intro, I talked about some of the biggest names in boxing that you've already faced. Now you're taking on a young lion, many consider the next great welterweight. What does this fight mean to you at this stage of your career? Well, for me, I try not to make too much out of it. You know, it's, it's a world title fight, and I'm thankful for that. Um, I just try to take a fight at a time. I've been fighting, what, 13 years as a professional now, so all, to me, all fights are the same. I'm just happy to be getting the opportunity to fight for another world title, and uh, just going in and try to take care of business. Not too many guys are lining up, though, to fight Errol Spencer. Of course. No, a number of big names who said no. But you gave up your title for this fight. Why? Because I feel like it's, as a top fighter, top ten fighter, you're obligated to take what comes on the table. And regardless of, you know, who it is, you know, like, Earl's cool. You know, Dirk is cool. Like, every, we can... Box in a boxing ring, we don't have to be, you know, I don't have to be mad at him or he don't have to be mad at me or we have to feel some type of way. It's boxing. It's a sport. And uh, we competitors and we're going to go in there and compete. Like we're, if it's left to me, we'll be friends before and we'll be friends after. But when we're in the ring, we're going to take care of business like we always do. Errol, you're coming off a dramatic victory to win the title. Will we see that sharp Errol Spence that we've seen here in the past? One who's certainly not content just being a champion? Or will we see a guy who may be looking down the road because everyone's talking about Errol Spence and Keith Thurman? Um, you're going to see the same Errol Spence. I can't look down the road because I know how dangerous Lamar Peterson is. I mean, he's somebody I've been watching since the amateurs. He's somebody I used to study when I was an amateur. You know, I've been in training camps with him. I know what Lamar can do. I've seen him fight. So, I mean, I've seen too many fighters look down the road, and then the guy that right in front of them end up beating them, and then they can't get those big fights because they lost. 
So I'm gonna focus on what's what's in front of me, and that's Lamar Peterson. That's a big task at hand. So I have to be 100% focused and hungry and dedicated for this training camp and for this fight. You will see a hungry Earl Spence Jr. I just think stylistically, this fight is really interesting. Only for the simple fact you got two of the best body punchers in boxing going at it in this fight. Uh, in your mind, Errol, how do you see January 20th playing out in the ring? Um, you know, I, th I think it, it'll probably start, at, start as a boxing match, but <laughs> well, I think boxing. at the end it's going it's, it's to end up as a dog fight, man. I mean, that's what – I mean, we both got big hearts, man. Like, i never known Lamont to duck any competition. i never known or seen anything on social media saying – Oh, Lamont turned down this fight. Lamont did this and did that. Like you said, it's not a lot of fighters that wanted to fight me. You know, those big names in the West A division, they all, you know, got that call to see, you know, did they want that fight? And a lot of them shied away from it. Most of them did. And Lamont stood up and said, yeah, I'll fight him. He vacated his belt for it. And, you know, he has a big heart and he's a dog. So, you know, and I'm, I have a big heart and I'm a dog too. So, we're probably going to start out boxing, but at the end, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a fight. Lamont, same question to you. Two of the best body punchers in boxing. How is this fight going to play out in your mind? Same way he said. Same thing he said. <laughs> I mean, like, you already know when most times I fight, it's going to be a filling out process. But the whole time I can tell you this, it's in my head, we're going to fight. And bottom line, that's probably what's going to happen. I thought it was interesting. You know, you heard Errol say you guys have trained together. He talked about when he was an amateur. He worked out with you. He said you gave him some tips on throwing different punches, things of that nature. Um, when you look at Errol now, you see any of the flaws that you saw when he was a young buck? And there are those flaws, <laughs> things that you can exploit come January 20th? No. Nah, uh, I kind of knew at the time that, you know, it was six years ago that he would be at this point. He'll be a world champion. Uh, saw a lot of talent in him. Uh, when you correct certain little things, that's just little things. Um, but for the most part, I've, saw, I've seen improvement. I've seen uh, progression throughout the pro ranks. And um, I think he'll continue to get better. What gives you your biggest confidence in this fight? Just me. You know, I just know who I am. I know I'm a competitor, um, competitive person. And... Um, Regardless of what, you come to win. So that, that's what gives me faith, hope. Barry, when these guys step into the ring, it'll be almost a year since Lamont has fought. From a timing standpoint, um, does that concern you considering Lamont will be getting into the ring with a, a younger guy and a guy who's been more active? No. Uh, well, when, you, when I look at EJ, which is what we call him, um, one of my kids from the amateurs, you know, and, and, and I instantly fell in love with him because he reminded me so much of Lamont. The way he fought, and like he said, you know, both, you know, have that dog type of mentality. Um, I remember when we went to France, on the way to France, and as a matter of fact, you remember this, and um, they stuck a guy in there that was a light heavyweight uh, with EJ to spar, and I stopped it. But he said, no, Coach B. I got him. I said, oh, look, this is a big guy, man. He said, no, I got him. And he went in there and commenced opening up that can, and he did get him. And so from that point on, I knew he was a special fighter. And then, like Lamont said, when well, Lamont went in there, and Lamont was somewhat of a mentor to Earl. And when he went in there and worked with him, he came out of the ring, and that day he told me, he said, I like him. Stay on that path. He's going to become a world champion. And so... It's bittersweet for me because this is one of my kids. You know, we talk, you know, and um, I love him. But I had to remind myself that this is business. This is what we do. Uh, it's love before with us. It's going to be love after. If I had my way, Keith Thurman would be sitting there, Danny Garcia would be sitting there, and some of the other big names. But they didn't want EJ. And if you notice, in both interviews, when Lamont talked, uh, after the fight, he asked for these guys. When EJ talked after the fight, he asked for these guys. Nobody's picking the phone up. So it, it all boiled down to these two. So that's what it is. I see the fight playing out the same way they see it playing out. 
um, Derek. I watched them come up. You know, I remember times in Mississippi. Uh, you remember that grind? Times in Mississippi, and it was the same thing. So I'm looking at these guys. The 20th of January, I think this is going to be one for the books, fan friendly. Where do you see Errol Spence when you talk about the welterweight division? Where is Errol Spence in your opinion? He's the man. You know, and you, you, you have people or, 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 or athletes that can fight, and then you have athletes not only can fight, but they are fighters. EJ and Lamont are both. Not only do they possess the skills and the talent to do it, but they can fight, and they will fight. They are fighters. But then you got a lot of people. How can you say that you are the best in the world and you don't fight the best in the world? As I recall, I look back at Marvin Hagler. He never discriminated. He fought everybody. Hearns, everybody. Ray Leonard, everybody. And in order for boxing to get back to those glory days, I think we need to, like Steven said, put the best in against the best. And let's make it happen. I have no problem with Lamar fighting anybody on the planet. I have a lot of confidence in him. And when I see Earl, just like you guys said, I think this is the future of boxing. Derek, let's talk about this fight. You got two type of fighters, love to fight on the inside. So do you tell your fighter, hey, lure that man in. You're the younger, you're supposed to be the stronger guy, and let him have it. No, I really kind of just, um, we have a little strategy, a game plan. We just, I try to perfect everything he's going to do in the ring for us being able to fight on the outside, being able to fight on the inside. The whole deal is to make him a more complete fighter so that the fight you saw in England won't be the same guy again. So, um, no, I won't tell him. I, I, I'll just prepare him to be a better inside fighter, a better fighter on the outside, better fighter on the ropes. And, you know, um, I always look for the perfect fight. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. And with that being said, it takes a great fighter to bring our greatness in another fighter. Right. So you see two guys going at it, and you're going to see an amazing fight just because of the mentality and the caliber of fighter that these two guys are. So you'll see a great fight. I mean, I couldn't, if you think about it, this is a better fight. I'm just sitting there thinking about listening to Barry and listening to Lamont. You know, you would saw Keith Thurman run around the ring, you know, you saw a rougher fight with Sean Porter, but you don't see two guys here who have the, that mentality to go get it. And, and very technical and very skilled and very, very technically sound fighters. So you look for a great fight like uh, Ray Leonard versus uh, a Hearns fight because of the skill and the, and the depth in which these guys have talent. So it's going to be a phenomenal fight. Absolutely. Since we're in New York, I think there was a rapper who said that if they didn't know me then, they know me now. Oh, yeah, no doubt. People certainly know you now. Right, no doubt. Yeah. What's been your secret? I mean, because when you look at what Charlo has done, he has really gone to a different level since he's been with you. And obviously, Arrow has lived up to all the expectations. A number of people want, what is your secret? What, so, what does Derek James do for <laughs> fighters? It's, no, it's no, not so much about a secret as about me being a former fighter. And it's one thing to do it. It's another thing to teach it. So I had to go in on the inside and kind of really understand it. So stand on the outside of everything. And so I realized that I don't follow any other old critiques about everybody would say about boxing, because boxing evolves. And that's my whole deal is to evolve with the sport. And so that's how I look at it, is that I don't follow anything. I hear people say that fighters are born not, I mean, punches are born not not developed, and that's not true, because we see it in Jamel Charlo. So it's all about being more technical and more fundamentally sound. That's the key to it all. If people, if, if you see more fundamentals in boxing, the talent level and skill set also grow with it. So that's what I focus on. Lamont, you know, when people talk about the welterweight division, they mention Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, names we've heard here today, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, They've even said Terrence Crawford. He hadn't fought yet in the welterweight division. But it's always seems like your name is last. Do you feel as if you're like the, unfor the forgotten guy in this welterweight division? And if so, what are you out to prove January 20th? I don't pay any attention to it. 
Um, I respect anyone's opinion. You have to. It's their opinion. They have a right to, to have an opinion. So I can't, I can't feel some type of way because someone have an opinion. I just go out, train, and do what I love to do. I get in the ring because I love the box, not trying to impress anyone or be on someone's list. I love to compete. I love the box. That's, it's that simple to me. Errol, 2017 will probably go down as one of the best years for boxing. We saw some great matchups. We saw you in high price fights. Uh, 2018 is kicking off with a great fight between uh, you two. What do you see for the welterweight division in 2018 and for Errol Spence in 2018? I mean, I, I see for the welterweight division, uh, the best fighting the best. I mean, I know I'm willing to fight the best. I know Lamont willing to fight the best. It's for the other guys to step up and, um, you know, make their choice. Do they want to be great or they j just want to get by? I mean, that's the only way that, you know, the welterweight division can get to the peak. If we fight, the best fighters fight each other and they fight them in their prime. Everybody's in their prime right now. I don't feel like waiting until I'm 30-something to, you know, want to fight the best guy out there. I want to fight the best right now. So I feel like 2018, you know, hopefully I get three fights in and it's, and it's with three top five fighters. All right. We'll wrap it up with this. Lamont, what, do we, what should we expect January 20th? I think we pretty much know what to expect. It's going to be a fight, highly competitive, um, highly skilled. And um, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's going to be a dog fight. Errol? I mean, you know how me and Lamont, if you've seen Lamont fight, you know how Lamont fight, you see me fight, you know how I fight. We've never been in boring fights. I mean, always in fan-friendly fights. We have a lot of dog in us, and that's what you're going to get. I mean, we're not going to shy away from it. And like I said, it's probably going to start out a boxing match, but at the end, it's going to be it's gonna be a fight. That's, our, that's both our mentalities, and that's our coach's mentality too. So, I mean, we got the mentality to go and get it. I mean, we're friends, but, I mean, we can talk in the locker room and, Right before the fight, we talk in the locker room, then we get out there, we're trying to kill each other. Good. I mean, that's our mentality. Take a few questions from members of the press. Just tell us your name, who you're with, and direct your question. Oh, hi. Uh, John Cudney, Reddit Boxing. So this is a question for Errol. So um, Lamont was already pretty established pro, I think, when you started fighting, because you uh, started out pretty late. Just wondering when you first became aware of him, if he was someone you followed uh, on TV before you eventually sparred each other. Um, yeah, he was somebody I followed on TV before I sparred each other, before I sparred him. Um, you know, I used to watch him and um, Anthony Peterson um, watch their fights. I just like their style. You know, I like their defense. I liked how they throw body punches. I like their fundamentals. So, um, yeah, I did, you know, grow up watching him in the amateurs before I met him. Okay, so just a follow-up question. Um, I was able to talk to uh, Lamont and Barry beforehand, and they mentioned, you know, training a bit as amateurs and almost described it as a mentor type relationship that you know they had a lot of respect for you advised you just wondering what it means now to have risen to this level and fight someone who you had seen before and was to some extent uh you know advised you early on um i mean i don't really put too much thought in it i mean it just you know that's the business of the sport i mean just like with any other fighter i mean you know i was a younger guy you know he was giving me advice and um you know telling me certain things i need to work on and, um, you know, now we're here to this point. I mean, it basically shows, you know, his longevity in the sport. That he's, you know, still around 13 years in the game. And it shows, you know, my come up from an amateur to now to a, you know, top level professional fighter. So uh, one last question here. So just wondering, uh, Derek uh, James. So uh, during the Kell Brook promotion, uh, you and uh, <laughs> Dominic Ingle got into it a little bit. Here we saw before this started. Right. You and Barry embraced each other, you know, uh, right. seems to be clear respect for, for I'm just wondering uh, to hear you first and then Barry after to talk about the relationship uh, between you two and between the two camps. Well, you know, we, they've known each other. Well, I, I initially met him like in 2007 when uh, in the U.S. Championships when I was in the U.S. Championships with uh, a friend, Charles Hadley, watching him fight. So I've known him and I got to know him a little bit more, be more better and he, he spent a lot of time with Errol. So, you know, if you got a guy who's spending time with your guy, you got to get to know those guys, you know, and you, you go to develop, you develop a friendship and a, 
and, 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 and respect for the guy. So, you know, I like him. You know, I, know, I like what he's done. He, you know, he has a, a gem of fighters, man. He creates these young, tough guys. I mean, he's, he's, he's right in the heart of it and, and the grind of it, which everybody can't do that, to be in the inner city like that and develop fighters like that. So, you know, I respect him, and I, I love what he does, you know, and uh, I'm going to keep doing that. Regardless of this fight, if you think about this, and this is the maturation of a fighter. Like this fighter, they saw him when he was amateur. They worked with him when he was amateur. But now he's grown into a, a man, a better fighter, a bigger fighter. And so we love that. I mean, so when you ask them how they feel about us, it's beautiful. Because that's, 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 that's what you want to see in life. Somebody get better. Somebody get to be the best that they could possibly be. And, and Barry's been there to support. And Lamont is always there by, on his shoulder. You know what I mean? So it's all good, man. I love it. Uh, Errol, Keith Heideck from BoxingScene.com, how you doing? Uh, what do you remember from your sparring session with Lamont back in 2011, I think it was? What did you get from that, and how do you remember it going? Um, just It was just great work, man. Um, it was just, it was, a, it was a learning experience. I mean, um, you know, just because I was the amateur, you know, it's the amateur level. You know, I'm going at a fast pace, you know, just flurring punches off, kind of fighting like a mirror kind. <laughs> and, you know, Lamont, you know, he's just being patient, you know, you know, blocking, you know, trying to counter and, um, you know, picking shots off, basically fighting at a, you know, at a, at a pro level, pro pace. And I, I didn't really understand it until, until, you know, I turned pro and started going 10, 12 rounds. And now, you know, I, I understand, you know, what he was doing and things like that. You guys never sparred together after that, though? No. <clears throat> uh, LeBron Peterson, Disney Studio Lawyers, Black Star News. Uh, Earl Spence is one of the most prolific southpaws in the business today, unlike Bud Crawford, who's a switch hitter. How do you plan to offset his left-hand stance, even though you were somewhat of a mentor towards him and you may feel mentally that you have a an advantage over him? Uh, not really too much worried about uh, Southpaw stats. Um, been fighting for 23 years now. Then, you know, encountered a few Southpaws, especially um, in an international level when you're fighting for the uh, U.S. team. 50% you know, of those guys are Southpaws. So I'm pretty sure I'll be able to handle the stats. Uh, my name is Cheyenne with Blue Blood Sports TV. So um, you haven't had too many fights at the welterweight division. Mm -hmm. Do you think the, the size is going to play a big part in this fight? Uh, of course, with anything, it can. But it's up to me and it's up to my team to make sure that don't happen. You know, it's still just because one thing <clears throat> might seem like an advantage for one person, um, it's up to the other side to make sure that that advantage is not an advantage. So if it is a size of uh advantage, then it's up to us to, to negate it. All right, thank you very much. One second. Everyone got this one? All right. Over your shoulder. Thanks. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Want to get one with the trainers? Uh, yeah. Have them. Barry, Derek. And Derek, can we just do a quick, uh, quick shot? Sorry, Keith. Go ahead, Lou. We'll try to catch up with Lou, baby. Can you guys touch down? All black. All right. You want me to hold the back? Let's go. 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 You guys take three steps to your left so we get the sign behind yeah. everyone this way a little bit. There you go. Kids must have been a box because I'm in the range of the one. Can you get to stage here again? You guys right here for a minute. Thank you. Oh, right here. Thanks. You got it. Ooh, you want to get in the middle? Yeah, Steve. 